In October 1979, the vast expanse of the Western Pacific Ocean bore witness to the formation of a storm unlike anything humanity had seen before. At its peak, it would span nearly half the size of the continental United States and unleash winds so ferocious that meteorologists were left in awe. This storm was Typhoon Tip, the largest tropical cyclone ever recorded in history. Despite its record-breaking size and strength, many people today don't know this storm ever existed. Unlike hurricanes like Katrina or Sandy, Typhoon Tip's legacy is overshadowed by its relative isolation and lower death toll. But make no mistake, Tip was a force of nature that could have rewritten history. This is the story of how a seemingly small cluster of clouds grew into the largest typhoon ever recorded, the unprecedented destruction it brought, and the lessons it left behind. Typhoon Tip's journey began on October 4, 1979, when a tropical disturbance was detected near Pohnpei in the Federated States of Micronesia. This region, characterized by active convection at the time, saw the formation of several circulatory systems along a wide stretch of the Western Pacific. Tip was initially a weak and disorganized system, hampered by the lingering effects of Tropical Storm Roger. Over the next two days, it gradually organized as the circulation patterns coalesced into a central low-pressure system, setting the stage for further intensification. By October 5th, Tip had strengthened into a tropical depression, showcasing steady growth in its wind speed and pressure drop. The system began moving west-northwest, navigating the open waters of the Pacific under favorable environmental conditions. Warm sea surface temperatures and low vertical wind shear allowed it to intensify further. On October 6th, TIP was upgraded to a tropical storm, gaining the official designation TIP. This marked the start of its meteoric rise to becoming a super typhoon. Its outer bands expanded, signifying an increase in its overall size even as the central structure consolidated. On October 7th, the storm entered a phase of rapid intensification, drawing energy from the abundant heat in the Western Pacific. Tip began to resemble a formidable cyclone with its cloud bands wrapping tightly around a developing eye. Its proximity to Guam heightened concerns, although the storm ultimately passed to the south of the island, sparing it from a direct hit. By October 8th, Tip had achieved typhoon status boasting wind speeds that categorized it as a significant tropical cyclone. This period also saw an expansion of its wind field, marking its evolution into one of the largest storms recorded. October 9th was pivotal in TIP's development as it rapidly intensified, reaching Category 4 equivalent strength on the Saffir-Simpson scale. The typhoon's central pressure plummeted while its size continued to grow. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center, JTWC, noted the storm's unusual size, with tropical storm force winds extending hundreds of kilometers from the center. This rapid development prompted weather reconnaissance missions to gather critical data on the storm's dynamics. On October 10th, TIP reached super typhoon status, exhibiting sustained wind speeds exceeding 150 power hours. Its central pressure continued to drop, reflecting an intense cyclonic structure. The storm's outer bands began affecting nearby maritime routes, leading to disruptions for vessels in the Western Pacific. By October 11th, tip size had expanded to record-breaking dimensions, spanning over 2,200 kilometers, 1,180 miles, in diameter. This made it the largest tropical cyclone ever recorded, dwarfing many prior systems in scale. October 12th marked the peak of Typhoon Tip's intensity. With sustained winds of 190 millimeters and a central pressure of 870 HPA, it became the most intense tropical cyclone ever measured. Its compact and well-defined eye reflected the storm's exceptional power. Satellite imagery captured the enormity of its cloud shield, which covered an area larger than half the continental United States. The record low pressure and immense size made TIP a subject of scientific fascination, even as it posed a severe threat to populated areas. Between October 13th and 15, TIP began to weaken slightly as it moved westward. Although its peak intensity was behind it, the storm maintained its massive scale and continued to exhibit characteristics of a powerful cyclone. 
The storm's outer bands brought rough seas and heavy rainfall to Okinawa and surrounding islands. Tip's trajectory shifted to the northwest as it encountered a mid-latitude trough, steering it away from a direct westward path toward the Philippines. On October 16th, Tip accelerated northeastward, heading toward Japan. Despite its gradual weakening, the storm remained formidable, with gale force winds extending over 1,000 kilometers from its center. On October 17th, its interaction with cooler waters and increasing wind shear began to sap its strength. However, it retained enough power to threaten southern Japan with significant impacts. October 19th saw Typhoon Tip make landfall in Japan, striking the island of Honshu. Although its winds had decreased to around 80 miles by this point, its immense size and the sheer volume of rainfall caused widespread damage. In southern Japan, over 600 mudslides were reported while flooding displaced tens of thousands of residents. A breach in a flood-retaining wall at Camp Fuji caused a devastating fire, claiming 13 lives and injuring dozens. The storm's remnants left a trail of destruction, including damaged homes, ruined agricultural land, and disrupted infrastructure. From October 20th to 24th, Tip transitioned into an extra tropical cyclone as it moved northeastward over the Pacific. It eventually dissipated near the Aleutian Islands, concluding its journey. Despite its immense power, the storm's direct impacts were relatively limited compared to its potential, largely due to its trajectory over open waters for much of its lifespan. Typhoon Tip remains a benchmark for meteorological extremes, a testament to the power of nature at its most intense. Survivors of Typhoon Tip, one of the most powerful typhoons ever recorded, experienced devastating conditions, but there aren't many direct personal quotes readily available in historical accounts. However, from survivor stories of other powerful typhoons like Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, we can understand the emotional toll and survival mentality. Survivors often reflect on the loss of family, homes, and the overwhelming emotional weight of seeing everything destroyed, but they also express deep gratitude for their survival and hope for rebuilding their lives. For example, a Typhoon Haiyan survivor shared, I am grateful for my children. We are still here, underscoring the resilience and survival instinct that many of TIP's survivors likely felt as well. For Typhoon TIP itself, the storm led to significant fatalities, and survivors of the aftermath described the immense destruction and the slow process of recovery. Although specific survivor accounts are harder to find in direct quotes for this typhoon. After Typhoon Tip struck, Japan's devastation was immense. Typhoon Tip was the largest and most powerful tropical cyclone ever recorded, with wind speeds reaching 190 mm pro. The storm left 99 people dead and 283 injured, while thousands of homes were destroyed. In the aftermath, thousands of people were affected, and significant flooding and damage were reported, particularly in coastal areas and southern Japan. Survivors were left to face the destruction, with many sharing their anguish. As one survivor, Hiroshi Tanaka, put it, The winds tore through everything we had. We thought we wouldn't survive. All we could do was hold on. The massive storm surge and relentless winds created a dire situation that left people clinging to anything they could find. Much like the responses to other natural disasters, the Japanese government faced criticism for handling the crisis. Initially, there was a delay in providing proper warnings and organizing emergency efforts. This led to widespread frustration, especially when the storm's full impact became apparent. However, unlike other political crises where leaders made harmful decisions, Japan's response to Typhoon Tip shifted towards rebuilding and recovery once the full extent of the damage was realized. Public reaction was fierce, with many demanding better disaster preparedness and improved communication channels. A survivor from the affected area, Akiko Sato, reflected, It was too late for most of us. The government failed to prepare us for something this big. In the end, Typhoon Tip proved to be a defining moment for Japan, reshaping not just the physical landscape, but also the government's approach to disaster management. As the storm subsided, those who survived began the arduous task of rebuilding their homes and lives. We lost so much, but we held on, said another survivor, Daisuke Fujimoto. 
We came together, and that's what saved us. Finally, after everything Japan went through, the nightmare was over. But unfortunately, this wasn't truly the end. In the aftermath of Typhoon Tip, the affected regions faced widespread devastation. Over 99 people lost their lives and nearly 283 others sustained injuries. Thousands of homes were destroyed or severely damaged, leaving countless families displaced. Agricultural lands and infrastructure were obliterated, with the estimated damage totaling in the hundreds of millions of dollars. The affected areas were left to grapple with recovery efforts amidst a landscape of ruin where roads were washed away, power lines were downed, and access to clean water was scarce. The typhoon, the strongest ever recorded, left its mark not just in terms of destruction, but also as a harsh reminder of the vulnerability of coastal and inland communities to such catastrophic natural disasters. Yet, amidst the destruction, communities came together to rebuild, holding on to the hope of a brighter future in the face of unimaginable hardship.